Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Umlink Energy Speaks Back, powered by Hawk. My name is Paul Webb. I'm the founder of B2B Energy, and I'm your host. Weekly, I present to you experts from around the world. Welcome to episode 98, where we are in Poland, and we are interviewing an ABB product manager with the experience of procurement. Our purpose, as always, is to provide a good understanding of energy management knowledge from around the world, which is available today for us to deliver savings that impact on our planet. On our journey of knowledge sharing, we would like to thank our sponsors, who are Diadem, for their green and blue roof systems, Umlink, for taking the confusion out of energy management, Park Systems, renowned for their energy software, Clean Energy Revolution, for their knowledge and networking through LinkedIn, B2B Energy for the 11 week energy program and working with organizations third largest expense. Alexis Energy for their power management systems led by Vision, who are an LED and controls company. Simewatts for the electronics and EV transition. Carbon Black Global for their waste to energy initiatives. Cinefix for their insulation coating and smart call for their AC initiatives. And lastly, our certificate partners, Esther Energy. Today's special guest has become an energy technology procurement expert with many insights to share with us today. So without any further ado, I give you Matus Zajak. Good morning, Matus. How are you? Good morning, Paul. I'm good, thanks. How about you? I'm very well. And is it good morning where you are today? Indeed it is. So oh. I'm based in Krakow, Poland, so it's 10.30 today. And the weather seems okay. As so far, so good. Right. And we've woken up to quite a grey morning. It's 15 degrees. What, what sort of temperature do you have there? It was more towards 18, 20, something like this. Right. And is that the norm for this time of year in Poland? It's a bit colder than usual, but uh, yeah, after the summer, especially that summer, that's kind of quite refreshing. And and would you did you have the um, the heat waves the same as the UK because it did spread right across Europe, didn't it? It did spread across the Europe, but UK, I guess it was uh, a big change and uh, very drastic to a yeah. lot of people in Poland. We are a bit more used to. Uh, heat waves and it was a bit less impactful than in the UK. Right. That's interesting to know that actually. So Matus uh, and Matt, as you said before the, the off air, I've met you through LinkedIn and we've had a, a couple of meetings and discussed what, what we both are doing in the industry. So for the benefit of our audience today, can you tell us about yourself and give us some of your background story? Certainly. So let's start with what I do today. So today I'm a global project manager and global product manager where I support uh, ABB in their, our carbon neutrality commitments, but I also uh, walk through this journey and create an external offering to help our customers decarbonize their buildings. Right. And when you say customers, what, what sort of customers are they? Usually building owners. Uh, so I focus on commercial buildings and we have these three key stakeholders, building owners, tenants, and building operators or facility managers. Mm -hmm. All of them have interlinked goals, a bit conflicting priorities, and the goal is to satisfy all three of them. So the goal isn't necessarily sustainability. It's obviously driving down cost, managing their bottom lines, etc. Yeah. Certainly. It's all about energy trilemma, but also comfort and operation of the building. Mm -hmm. We all know building owners own the capex, but usually tenants pay the opex costs and uh, facility managers st stand in the middle and need to know the technology support all of them. Uh, so my goal is to help uh, all these free stakeholders cooperate and drive results. Right. And how long have you been working for ABB? I've started my seventh year now, so it's right. quite a long time, uh, but it's time been then. a journey. It's yeah. been a journey. I 
moved to this role uh, through different phases, through different functions. So for me, coming back to energy industry has been quite a story as well. Right. So let's hear the story. Let's go right back. Take us back to the beginning, Matt, when when you left school or, or when you started your career, your learning, etc. I guess I, I need to go back to, to 2010. And from my background, I, I was raised in energy poverty. And that's why I decided to study energy engineering to help everyone get clean energy for all. Uh, and then while studying at university, I also started family. And that's why I landed my first procurement internship at Rolls-Royce. Uh, but this was just to make ends meet. So I happened to be to join procurement by accident, as many of procurement professionals do. Right. Uh, a year later, I enrolled into a graduate program at Shell, also in procurement. But I always try to, uh, try to uh, be within energy companies or work to with energy companies. And I'm thankful to, to Shell and the University of Science and Technology, so my university, uh, for their trust and flexibility I was giving because I needed to juggle full-time job, full-time studying and starting a family. So I got a lot of support both from the company and from university. And I'm sure you would have needed that support. That's, that was a big ask, wasn't it, to juggle all of that? Indeed it was, and my employer was very flexible uh, when it came to when I start work, when I finish work, and it was my first real-time um, task-based management or being managed on a task-based basis rather than time basis. It right. was a really good learning opportunity, and uh, well, it impacted the rest of my career. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the procurement element of it. What what was you procuring? A lot of services, uh, some tools, nuts, bolts, all this, all this model stuff. So I, and also IT services for Shell and their um, trading and shipping business. Mm -hmm. But I also had the chance to work with a refinery uh, in US uh, and support them on their um, energy efficiency programs. And this is where I started coming back a bit to, to the energy industries mm -hmm. uh, where I started helping our engineers uh, get or make their sites much more energy efficient with what I did in procurement. So project procurement, CAPEX oriented and OPEX oriented towards helping uh, our engineers towards energy efficiency. And what, what sort of technology was that ranging from? A lot of different uh, technologies, but the, the major one where I supported Shell in US was their industrial steam processing, mm -hmm. uh, where I worked together with the MRO supplier, where we helped uh, change their nuts, bolts, screws, valves, uh, everything across the steam process handling to help lower the steam leakages. And right. we managed to save yeah, seven figures on on these kind of projects. Wow. There's a significant a lot of waste in steam, isn't there? Indeed, industrial energy efficiency is, is a big topic. And this is also what would drove in the rest of my career focusing on industrial energy efficiency and now moving more towards building energy efficiency as well. I know I'm distracting your story here, but for me, steam waste, you can see it. That's, so as long as you can see the waste in the, the steam going up, mm -hmm. you can, it's, it's one of the only energies that you can see that you're wasting, I think, because you can see it in the air. Or am I being a bit too easy going on it is it sometimes they're hidden mm -hmm. waste with steam it, it depends where and it, it, there are regional differences how energy efficiency is treated what people see what people can notice and what they cannot mo notice mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is visual uh, some of it is metered 
So mm -hmm. some people just, just see the waste that goes up and mm -hmm. becomes a greenhouse gas. Uh, steam is quite a big greenhouse gas as well. Uh, and some of it can be metered. A lot of it is not metered as well. So people, mm -hmm. they don't know what they miss. So from the procurement level, you was looking at, at looking at metering as well. You was looking at all the aspects of energy management. It's quite an interesting concept here because I'm talking to someone who's a procurement specialist that understands energy management. We don't normally see that, do we, in this industry? That's a good perspective. Never thought about it, but but indeed, it it's yeah, it's very scarce uh, competence to to meet person who does procurement, does construction projects, and understands energy management. Indeed. Mm. It's rather other way around where energy managers try to get themselves up to speed on the procurement topics. Exactly. And there are there's us as energy managers are trying to influence the procurement side, division, department, etc. And our from an energy management point of view, it's focusing on the energy efficiencies. Procurement is always for me, it's all about cost, isn't it? It's all about driving the cost down of procuring the right technology, the right service, the right product. You know, they go through the different criterias, but very seldom we see that the criteria within their um, uh, focus, what they're looking to purchase is energy man energy savings. You know, um, we are seeing that changing though know, with the likes of ISO 50001, aren't we? There's a lot of focus util utilizing that. Indeed. But this is also an opportunity for energy managers and procurement managers to cooperate, not on a one by one project by project basis, but more on the portfolio approach. Just sit with your procurement person, explain your 10 year plan, show them how you plan to increase energy efficiency and therefore drive savings and let them report it as savings as well. Yeah. Not only project by project, but on the whole. Yeah, OPEX whole, side. Yeah, this is benefit. precisely what gets in the end into the financial figures of the company. Yeah, the return on investment, basically. Yeah, indeed, the return on investment, but not on one investment, but on a program of various investments. Portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, yes. So, what has been the driver behind this, Matt? Um, you started off talking about uh, in your country fuel poverty, etc., and that was your drive. What was the driver regarding your energy management um, sort of beliefs now? I think it changed throughout my career. Uh, the first thing I always wanted was to come back to energy industry. And this is what actually shaped it. My journey shaped my beliefs in, in this way. Mm -hmm. um, just to share, after Shell, I joined ABB also in the procurement department, buying various services, also consulting services. And then I was offered to buy construction projects and then on top of that energy. And I felt that each year my beliefs on energy management, what needs to be done changed and continue to evolve. Uh, same way with... Yeah, energy efficiency, decarbonization, it changes depending on wh where you sit and where, where, what your KPIs are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you need to get a lot of experience to to come down to, the, it all boils down to the energy trilemma. So managing these competing priorities of energy security, sustainability and affordability. Because in the end, it's one complex system that has these conflicting priorities. What's the word you're saying there? I'm, I'm, is it the energy dilemma? Energy tree lemma. Tree because lemma. there are three of them, right? <laughs> energy yeah. security, affordability, and sustainability. And they oh. are a bit competing to each other. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard that. And now I, I like I like that. Say, say it again for us. Energy tree lemma. Tree sustainability, lemma. security, and affordability. Right. And where does that come from? Is that something that you've put together, Matt? Or is that something that has come from ABB? 
oh, I thought it's the industry wide term. So, oh, right. Uh, <laughs> so I, I use use it continuously. I heard it quite a long time ago. Uh, not sure who who created this phrase, but I thought it's widely used. Right. So at least within across ABB, we use it quite a lot right. when it comes to energy management. Uh, yeah, but the whole energy system as well. Right. Well, look, I appreciate you sharing that with us today because uh, I, it's a it's a new phrase in that. I've picked up on today, so I, I appreciate that. Um, so tell us more about um, sort of your background and and what what's sort of making you what you're doing today. Um, I spent four years uh, managing procurements across ABB Group, uh, energy procurements across ABB Group, and it shaped me quite significantly because the the first thing I did in my new role. Well, then new role is I didn't reach out to operations. I didn't reach out to uh, to my procurement managers. I reached out to sustainability and asked them, what are your goals? How can I make it happen? Mm. And it was funny because they told me that I'm the first procurement person who reached out to them. So it was wow. before renewable energy procurement was sexy. So it's, yeah, now, now it's more more important, but it was back in a day where not too many companies thought about it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is where we build up our strategy, energy procurement strategy across ABB on first data, getting the right data at the right time, well, real time yeah. across the portfolio. Second, minimizing consumption. Third, managing the cost risk and for managing sustainability of our procurements. And we managed to, to start off uh, towards getting to 100% renewable energy. Uh, and I, when I started, it was 7%. When I ended my procurement role, it was 32%. So it was, well, yeah, over four years, quite a big improvement. It shaped me a lot. And I helped, a l I, start, I started helping our sales teams in promoting energy efficient products energy efficient solutions and decarbonization solutions to our customers. And this is where I switched to project management and now product management for our decarbonization offering. Yeah. How many products are we talking about here? Oh, well, ABB has hundreds of products that help uh, customers make their sites more energy efficient. Mm. I am part of smart buildings division where we support commercial buildings. Yeah. So we talk about energy sub-distribution products, energy distribution products like meters, but also like enclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about electrical controls, lightning, shading, occupancy sensors. We talk about HVAC controls. Uh, so uh, yeah controls for everything regarding heating, ventilation, air conditioning, heat pumps, etc. Uh, we talk about variable speed drives. Uh, so making your motors much more efficient by frequency regulating them from mm -hmm. zero to 100 across the range and not only on and off. Yeah. And we talk about EV chargers, energy storage, and software solutions that encompass all of them yeah uh, all of them interlink operate optimize themselves and presumably wrap around all of that you've got the service providing as well so you have a team of service engineers service management that can manage all those technologies on behalf of the organization abb currently as of today is a technology provider rather mm -hmm. than the end-to-end -end service provider so we cooperate with system integrators, facility managers who help us uh, reach out to end customer right. and serve the end customer the okay. best. Yeah, re recently we uh, signed a partnership with a big facility management company in Finland uh, to reach out to end customers in the best way. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about the renewable and, and like the net zero approach and how you can stage the building and organizations to be net zero. Do you believe that with all your products, you can take an organization 
off of the grid basically and become a hundred percent um net zero i believe in partnerships so there is no company no financial advisor who can go through energy transition alone and support all the customers in all geographies in all mm -hmm. segments across all technologies so i prefer to partner with companies yeah. who believe in energy transition believe in decarbonization and want to help and want to cooperate to democratize access to energy transition to decarbonization to yeah, end customers yeah, yeah. Because we have the technologies, different companies have different technologies. It's all about how we package them, how we deliver them, and how we finance them. So let me Advanced... ask, let me ask that ahead. question. Let me ask the question in a different way. If you had a collaboration of different organizations, different service providers, do you believe we could take an organization off grid a hundred percent? and decarbonize them? I think we could. The question is, do we want to take everyone off grid? Right. Uh, so yes, islanding is an option. There is an option to put energy generation, energy storage, and energy controls to make it happen. But I do not want to undervalue the value of a grid. Right. A grid is a system that helps us interconnect, helps us, helps us speak. A grid yeah. is like internet for computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to lose that. Yeah. But then if we made the grid renewable as well, we'd be in a far better position, wouldn't we? If that could all be. No, I think mm -hmm. this is my take on it. Yes, the grid is important, but we need to release the grid from the risks around it because it's quite fragile, really. If you, we start putting more, for instance, putting more EV on there and expect the cars to be fast charging and and ready and available as and when we're doing these journeys, then the pressure goes back on the grid. Um, so we need to give that breathing space, basically. Um, if we take all our buildings off grid, it's a bit of a... Um, a magic wand time to to bring down the climate change, obviously, but I don't think it's feasible. Um, but I think organisations should be shooting for the. Personally, I think we should be shooting for the stars and hitting the moon. You know, that's got to be our approach. Fully agreed. Uh, there are differences between supply market design, between transmission distribution and between consumption, they all need to cooperate. Uh, and we need all three. We need supply, we need transmission distribution, we have storage, and we need consumption. When, when you mentioned EVs, yes, this would be a huge challenge for power grids when uh, all people start uh, fast charging their EVs, putting on heat pumps, and wanting to use all of it at the same time. Yeah. Thankfully, we have smart charging and smart controls that help us manage that. And this is actually key to successful behind the meter optimization. We need smart software that tells all these dump assets how and when to be used and how to best optimize their load to the needs of the building or and, uh, and the grid local community as well. Yeah. Um, there's pressures in the industry regarding lead times on technologies. Are you seeing that in your industry? Lead times are increasing in a lot of advanced markets and advanced businesses, especially We've seen what happens, what happened to semiconductors. We yeah. see current challenges with supply chain. Uh, we see lead times with photovoltaics and batteries being yeah. longer and longer. Uh, it impacts us as a business, but it impacts us as a society even more. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do? We can 
plan better. That's one thing we can yeah. plan better ahead. We can reimagine our supply chains. But in a nutshell, we should all start with a small democratic bottom-up actions, making our life and business more energy efficient and resource efficient as well. Yeah, exactly. You can wait a year or two for uh, PV to be installed, but maybe it's easier if you lower your consumption exactly by the same amount Yeah, within a month or two. I always say... Actions. I always say energy management is a journey and the journey has got to be reduce your demand first. <laughs> Don't start putting solar on the roof now and renewables, et cetera. Reduce your load first and your demand because the solar that you might require is probably going to be half the size once you reduce the amount of energy you don't, you're not actually meant to be using or using efficiently. So, you know, it's a journey and I've always stated that. Um, so <clears throat> that leads me very nicely, Matt, into my next question. And um, it's that time when I like to sort of ask, is there something you can give back to our industry today as a takeaway for our listeners? I think it all starts with, or it can all boil down into three actions. The first one is measure, the second one is control, and the third one is optimize. So the first one, well, measure. What gets measured gets improved. It's like with driving a car, when you see your car is showing you how much you use fuel real time, then you change your behavior to compete and you compete with yourself yeah. to lower that, right? It, the same with energy. If you see real time how much energy you use, how much carbon emissions you emit, uh, then you can do small actions, changing thermostat settings, using your equipment at different times, uh, all of these small actions, or unplugging all the equipment when you don't need it. Well, first you need to measure, right? It all starts with there. Yeah. Once you measure, then you can start thinking about savings. And uh, yeah, that's why, that's where controls come in and they all come with the same claim right the cleanest greenest cheapest kilowatt hour is the one you don't need don't consume or can switch off yeah and this is well all of it can be easily deployed and it's quite cheap so why, why don't why not doing that it's quicker than you would need to wait for pv permitting mm -hmm. And the third one is is optimizing, uh, optimizing between all the different assets you have on on in the building. It can be lightning, it can be HVAC, it can be photovoltaic, it can be EV charger, it can be heat pump, uh, all the other equipments. A lot of buildings today they do not have technology to make these systems assets talk to each other. And it can happen that EV charger and heat pump and a big HVAC uh, or AC in a different part of the building all go, uh, all start at the same time, go on, and then your load goes through the roof and you become a liability to the grid yeah. uh, supplier. Well, if you just allow all of these di different systems to talk to each other, you save a lot yourself and you do good to the community as well. Yeah. Brilliant. I really like that. It's a really good approach um, and very valuable lesson for our listeners. And um, I appreciate your, your time in giving that today. So uh, Matt, it's been really interesting, the concept here of the introduction of procurement um, and the interview regarding that side of it. I've never really interviewed someone from the procurement expertise side of it. And I, you know, thank you for sharing that knowledge today and bringing that different dimension into to what we're doing. Please, you and your family stay safe in these times. 
Thank you, Paul. Stay safe as well. 